All right, welcome back. So now we're going to be looking at how to do intervals involving uh, varieties of our trick functions. Could be a single trick function or a combination of some trick functions uh, together with each other. Uh, sometimes even uh, powers uh, of two trick functions beside each other. So there are some key ideas, key concepts from trigonometry that we uh, need to be aware of here. Uh, specifically, those are uh, your standard identity that everybody really hopefully knows at this point. That is that cosine squared plus squared equals 1. We also have 1 plus tangent squared equals secant squared. And 1 plus cotangent squared equals cosecant squared. Those are the two that you're a little less familiar with. Uh, those are actually going to be important here now. Uh, we need them. Uh, and then the other two, I uh, actually showed this to you uh, in a previous example. Um, and that is that cosine squared can be written as 1 plus cosine of double angle over 2, and sine squared can be rewritten as 1 minus cosine of a double angle, all that over 2. These were identities that were used in trig uh, as kind of just an intermediate step uh, to generate, uh, eventually generate your half angle formulas. Uh, when you substitute in alpha over 2 for uh, x, uh, they generate your, and then class square root, of course, they generate your half angle identities. And so they were kind of just like throw off identities in trig. You didn't really use them a lot. It served a lot of purpose. It would still let you mess around with powers of x and stuff, but probably weren't even really asked to memorize them. Uh, in calculus, these are essential. These are essential. And we're going to see why in a moment here. We're going to see why in a moment. Okay. So to see why uh, they become important, let us begin uh, and ask this question. A very reasonable question. Can we do the integral of cosine squared x dx or sine squared x with integration parts? Right. Can we do this with integration by parts? Okay, a very uh, Reasonable question to ask, since cosine squared is a product, so maybe a derivative came about somehow as a product role. That's a really reasonable question to ask. Uh, we encountered cosine squared in a role uh, back in, uh, I believe it was 6.4, when we were doing volumes with, uh, maybe it was actually 6.4. It was actually six, uh, three. We we're doing volumes with washers. Uh, we actually encountered that one on one of our examples. Actually, I'm sorry, I was wrong. Uh, it wasn't cosine squared, but rather it was sine squared. Uh, and so we did that by invoking the sine squared identity. So that's how we worked it out, and that's how we ended up being able to go through and eventually get to the integral of the sine squared eventually became this uh, pi over, well, we still have pi over 2 factor, pi over 2x minus pi over 4 uh, sine of 2x. So that was for our original problem there. Uh, so we did it with sine. In a similar fashion, you could do it for cosine squared, and we will in a little bit. But first, uh, we want to address this question of can we do integration by parts on cosine squared. So let's approach it and do that. Uh, so integral cosine x times cosine x dx. Uh, so 
uh, how do we do this? Well, we have really two choices here. Uh, we could let u be uh, cosine squared, right, and approach it that way. Uh, see how that happens, see how that works. Or we can let u be cosine and dv be the other cosine. It's kind of the natural way to do it. Uh, let u, or so du, would be the derivative of cosine, which would be negative sine x dx. Uh, integral of cosine is just sine. Integral of cosine is just sine. So invoking our integration by parts formula, that'll be uv. Uh, cosine x sine x minus the integral of v du. So minus the integral of sine times minus sine. Well, the minus would actually just make that plus. Sine times sine is sine squared x dx. Okay, and then we're okay, well, I have sine squared, so. Let's try integration by parts on that. Maybe this will be like that uh, integral we did with the cosine and the e to the x back in the last section, right? Where we can, uh, you know, end up getting something where we can bring it to the other side and divide. Maybe it's going to work out like that. So let's uh, continue and try integration by parts a second time. Kind of with that hope in them, right? So, again, let's let u be sine and let dv be the other sign. Okay, and then we differentiate. du is just cosine x dx. And then we integrate v. And when we do, we get negative cosine uh, x. Okay. And so we're ready to carry this through again. So uh, the cosine x sine x is still there. So cosine x sine x. And then that would be plus vu, which is going to be negative cosine sine. Okay, so that's actually going to be minus cosine x sine x, and then minus, right, the integral of v du, but because of the minus, it's actually going to become a plus integral of v du, cosine times cosine, cosine squared x dx. Okay, and then simplifying, cosine x sine x, cosine x sine x goes away. And so on the left-hand side, I have integral of cosine squared x dx. And on the right-hand side, I have integral of cosine squared x dx. Uh, so what I've managed to do with integration by parts is show the astounding fact that the integral of cosine squared x dx is equal to the integral of cosine squared x dx. Gee, really? All right, so that didn't work. All right, the integration by parts didn't work using the most reasonable way. The other options aren't even any more promising. All right, you could let u be cosine squared, v, 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 dx. All that's going to do is overcomplicate the next integral you have to deal with. Uh, uh, you can try it. And then, of course, the other option really leads nowhere. Let u be dx, I guess. Uh -huh. But then you have to be able to work out the integral cosine squared. And there's just really no way to, to manage that. So, uh, so this doesn't work. And that's okay. Uh, we tried something and discovered it didn't work. It was a reasonable thing to try, though. 
So let's instead use the identity. So let's use the trig identity instead. So integral of cosine squared x dx will be equal to, and we again have our identity up here, uh, 1 plus cosine 2x over 2. So what I'm going to do to make writing it a little uh, simpler is I'm going to factor out the 1 half. And I don't have integral of 1 plus cosine of 2x dx. Okay. So for cosine 2x, I will need to do a substitution. Let u be the inside part. du demands I have a 2 to go with my dx. So breaking up my integral. So I can work out each part individually. I have 1 half times the integral of dx plus 1 half. I'm going to leave a little bit of room here because i got to account for that du stuff. Integral of cosine 2x. And I need a 2 to go with my dx. So I put the 2 there. And that means I'm dividing by it on the outside. Okay, so now I have cosine u du. Cosine remember, behaves the opposite of what sine does. Sine for derivatives is positive, but sine for integrals is negative. So cosine for integrals is positive. So we do that integral of 1 half dx, it's just 1 half x. plus one-fourth, and again, integral of cosine is sine, so sine u, sine 2x, plus constant. So there we have it. There we have it. The integral of cosine squared is actually one-half x plus one-fourth sine of 2x. All right, so we've worked out integral cosine squared, and again, in a similar fashion, you could go with integral of sine squared as well.